Hey gadget groupies, we're living in a tablet and mobile phone world. The exciting growth areas for working on the go coming from multi-mode laptops and slates. Still, there are those of us who prefer a traditional laptop layout and many whose daily needs don't require bleeding edge tech specs. Lenovo is targeting a casual computing demographic with their low-cost IdeaPad 100S. I've been enjoying recent Windows 10 tablets powered by Intel Atom processors, low power and slower than their Core i series brethren, but still perfectly capable machines for document work, streaming video, and even a little light audio recording. This netbook approach has evolved well over the last couple years, and the 100S builds on that progress. Walking around the hardware, it's an attractive setup, a rich red plastic shell which tapers into a sharp wedge shape. Its overall footprint is lightweight and easy to throw into a backpack or bag. We're using an 11-inch screen with a resolution of 1366 by 768 It won't win any awards for clarity, but my older Ultrabook used a similar screen size and resolution. It's a decently bright panel, though it will wash out in daylight, and viewing angles aren't terrific. Still, I can't think of many situations where you'd want to be using this from a more severe angle than sitting right in front of it. Sitting atop the screen is a 0.3 megapixel webcam, which should really only be used for web chat or Skype calls. Below the screen is a nicely laid out keyboard. The keys have good separation, but the key travel and feel is very mushy. Worse still, the panel that houses the keyboard has a significant amount of flex to it. I've typed several articles and a video script on the 100S, so I'm not concerned with durability for casual use, but aggressive typers and students might not enjoy what this laptop offers. Maybe the only true hardware sin of this budget notebook however, might be with the touchpad and its complete lack of support for gestures. Using the idea pad for a month, I'm still not used to using scroll bars on the sides of my windows. That you can't even scroll from the touchpad is a serious bummer. We do have a terrific collection of ports though. On the right, a pair of USB 2 ports. On the left, we get HDMI, a headset jack, and a micro SD card slot to expand the limited storage. Bottom firing speakers get the job done and they won't have any audio competition thanks to the fanless design. It's nice and loud, but we're obviously not talking about an audiophile listening experience. Playback is pretty lean, bass is pretty weak. The tablet grade hardware runs fairly cool, the warm spot is under the left side of the keyboard by the way, and it never got uncomfortable to use in my lap. It's tablety hardware, but happily Windows 10 has been running well on lower power tech. The Atom processor here is built to power apps, but we still have access to traditional desktop software. It's never gonna be speedy, but it's entirely possible to use photo editing software like GIMP or audio recording software like Audacity. Heck, even installing your preferred web browser. It's not any more powerful than a nice Android tablet, probably less powerful than a new iPad, but the OS supports more robust software. Battery life was pretty great. On our movie test streaming 30 minutes of HD video over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness, the 100S drained about 6% of its battery. That's better than most tablets we run through this benchmark, thanks to the larger shell containing a bigger battery. Lenovo rates this for around eight hours on a charge. Hitting the screen brightness and integrated graphics will cut that down, but with what the IdeaPad is designed to handle, you shouldn't be worried about running for a charger in the middle of the day, which is a good thing because we have a pretty large wall warty charger supplied and I needed to use the triple wide spot on my power strip just to plug it in. The main limitation of this setup might be the lean storage. You start off with 32 gigabytes, and after formatting, that's really gonna be more like 27 gigabytes, and Windows is going to take about 10 gig for itself before the customer even gets to start using it. Outside of web browsing and writing, installing apps, storing photos, downloading a couple movies to watch, that 17 GBs is gonna fill up pretty quick. If you're looking to push this Lenovo to its limits, you might as well factor in a memory memory card into the total purchase price. There's no touch screen here or screen flipping capabilities. More expensive tablet and hybrid options might include a detachable display or fun stuff like a projector, but the IdeaPad is boiling this down to nail the basics. And sure, there are a lot of compromises here, but it still kind of worked for me. It's a solid example of what manufacturers can do with Windows to combat ultra low cost Chromebooks. My current low cost writing solution is an eight inch tablet and a Bluetooth keyboard, which is a little easier to carry, but really isn't more convenient for writing in different locations. I kind of always need to use a table. Writing on a couch or a comfy chair, a traditional laptop design is preferred. The IdeaPad is light, well balanced, and easy to use just about anywhere. It did highlight one major change in my own computing habits though, in that I really missed having a touchscreen. I quickly jumped back into my old habits with keyboard shortcuts, but even after a month, 
there were still some things I'd reach up to tap on the screen before remembering it couldn't do that, like the notification shade or scrolling on a website, especially since the touchpad doesn't support that gesture. So is this the right laptop for you? It's easily found online for under $180, and that's not bad for a machine that can easily get you through the basics. A similarly spec tablets will often compete price-wise and deliver a touchscreen, but you'll have to factor in the cost of other accessories like keyboards and mice. To be sure, there are nicer touchscreen solutions out there like the Surface 3 or other systems in Lenovo's lineup like their Yoga tablets, but the price tag on those will often climb to almost three times what the 100S is asking. For the consumer or student who understands the compromises here, the 100S could be an excellent solution for the savvy shopper. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it by shopping via the affiliate links below every video or by buying my book. Take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs is now available on Amazon to help you take your mobile phone photo game up a notch. And be on the lookout for my future phone and tablet coverage on pocketnow.com. So hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.